to the inaugural uh, OT Help Desk uh, YouTube video series. So what we're going to do is, is we'll provide a, a series of videos on a weekly basis because quite frankly, a lot of our students has, have asked us to. Um, but we don't want to be compared to uh, you know the others that are out there like, uh, what is it, Bill and Ted? Is that, is that Bill it, Bill and Ted? Ted. Uh, Bill and Ted. Um, but anyway, um, so I'm, I'm Big J and he's, he's Little J. Little J, and that's what they call us here at OT Help Desk. And you know, uh, you can see the irony, irony in that one, right? right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but anyway, um, so we, for the first time, you think about this for a second, right? Okay, um, think about what OT students struggle with a lot when it comes to different topics. So for our first topic, okay, I'll let you pick. Like, what do you think students sometimes struggle with? Uh, well, one that we get a lot of questions about this, everybody's favorite, I know you guys love it, is eating and swallowing. Feeding, eating, and swallowing. Well, you know, according to um, AOTA and ACOPE and really our practice act, OTs are responsible, okay, for feeding, okay, eating, and swallowing. Now think about that, what is feeding? Well, for us, if we're dealing with a child or an adult who's unable to, to feed, meaning they can't get the food to their mouth, okay? Um, you know, we have a responsibility to set that up. Whether it's a spinal cord injury, you know, at a C4, C5, you know, that needs a support system to get food to their mouth, or whether it's a child, okay, who is having problems with just the idea of being able to manipulate food and get it to their mouth. Maybe they don't have hand dexterity or something of that nature. And then all the way down to a CBA, you know, a CBA who could be right-handed and they could be a right, um, they could be affected on the right side and be flaccid and have to use the left. So I just don't want you to forget about that because it's not that we're not gonna talk about it today, okay? It's that we probably need to focus a little bit more on the things that OTs feel a little more uncomfortable with. And I think swallowing, you know, the actual process of uh, once the food's there, swallowing becomes an issue. Definitely. Okay, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the techniques that are used. So, right out of the gate, the very first step, right? Um, the, or what it phase. Right, what's the first phase, Joseph? So the first phase we're looking at is the anticipatory phase. And in that anticipatory phase, well, why don't you take it, John? Well, in the anticipatory phase, okay, we're thinking about what happens in the limbic system. I know, I know, step back. This isn't a neuro lesson, okay? But what happens is, as I'm sitting here, quite frankly, I smell donuts. That's right, and I'm a donut king. I know I look it, but I'm a donut king. All right, so the reality of it is, is do I want a donut? When I smell it in the limbic system, the volitional uh, abilities that a person has, yes, I know, there they are. I smell them and I'm excited about eating a donut because you know what? I know what a donut tastes like, Right. okay? And it has to come from somewhere. So when somebody has a deficit, and I'll use an example of a TBI or a CVA, what happens many uh, times is, is their stomach doesn't even tell them they're hungry, okay? And then there may not be a connection to the volitional elements of that, okay? So that's interoception is what it's referred to, and it is a client factor, okay, under global mental health systems, okay? So you need to be thinking about that because that happens, okay? Now, we know that into the, the next phase, which would be the... Oral prep phase. Oral prep phase, a lot happens in the oral prep phase. So first of all, okay, we're looking at, okay, the oral musculature, okay? Does the person have the ability, okay, to open and close their mouth? Do they have the facial musculature to be able to do that? Don't worry, I'm not gonna hit you with the cranial nerves and the facial nerve and all that, I won't do that, I won't do it, okay? But the reality is you gotta know the steps. Okay, so each one of these, these steps, okay, occurs in the phases. So in the phase, I've got to be able to move. The next thing I need to be able to do is move my tongue up and down and side to side. So up down is what a newborn has and they learn by sucking. Okay, the next stage is, is they're moving things around laterally, 
It's called lateralization. The tongue moves side to side and pushes food and moves it around. After that, okay, it goes right into what's considered the rotary chewing phase. So now you rotary chew, which means you move in side to side, you're rotary chewing. And what's it gonna do? It's gonna help us form a bolus. Now, once we form a bolus, okay, we go into the next stage. Is that correct? That's right. So once we form the bolus, once the tongue starts to move it towards the back of the throat, that's gonna be known as the oral phase. All right, so once we hit into the oral phase and the bolus gets moved to the back, the vagus nerve trips, yeah, it does. Okay, and what it does is it brings up, what's it bringing up? The larynx. Ah, so it's gonna bring the larynx up. And that's that, I'm starting now, and as it comes up, what happens is the tongue with the bolus on it gets pushed against the roof of the back of the mouth. And that's known as the vellum, okay? And the vellum is the gateway to the air. So that's your airway. So it closes off the vellum by pressing up. Once that happens, the epiglottis behind drops and it closes off the airway. And then we have an effective swallow, hopefully, because then it moves into what phase? We've got the pharyngeal phase after the oral phase, so pharyngeal is next. So now it's gonna push it down, okay, um, into the stomach. And um, then we've got the esophageal phase. Which makes it go all the way into the stomach and finishes off the process. So I'm not sure I really care about those two phases initially. What I care about is what happens when somebody swallows and it doesn't go down, okay? Or it gets caught in the airway or something of that. We, we, we refer to it, right, as dysphagia? Right, so anytime you're having a deficit in eating and swallowing, that's gonna be dysphagia. And it can happen at any of the four stages, but like Big J said there, we wanna focus on the, the oral prep phases and the oral phases. Yeah. So once that, once that happens, okay, and someone swallows, and let's say, let's say it's a child with Down syndrome, or let's say it's, it's an adult who's had a CVA or a TBI, okay, um, and we want to find out, okay, if, you know, they do have a problem, how, how do we do that? Uh, so... You give them something to eat or drink, and you want to, of course, assess for any signs of dysphagia. Um, some of the most common signs you'll see are if they cough, um, you know, if they're not able to effectively swallow it, or if after they swallow the food or drink, you're gonna ask them to say, ah, and tell us what's going on. Yeah, you're gonna hear a real gurgly sound, and that's not good. It's also, might be referred to as a wet swallow, I know you hear that. Um, and it's so not that's gonna, more aspiration, right? Exactly. That's going to be, you know, an indication of aspiration there. Um, when so, they, so wait, wait, wait. So aspiration mm -hmm. is not the same as dysphagia. It's not. No, dysphagia is just a deficit in eating and swallowing. And then aspiration is when the food has been swallowed, but it's gone into their airway um, and, you know, it's potentially gone into their lungs. So um, if they're asking you in a question or if you're with a client, more importantly, really, I know that. Okay, but if they're asking you um, how you check for that, really, the easiest way to check is just to get a little Dixie cup, take a little swig of water and ask them to swallow and then say, ah. Oh. And what that's going to really be checking, right, is for dysphagia, okay, but if there's a wet response, then they're aspirating. That makes sense? Absolutely. Okay, now tell me, okay, um, tell me what happens when OT uh, is involved here. We know speech is involved with swallowing, and we know speech does a video fluoroscopy, okay, also known as an FEES, okay, they do that, and that measures the the uh, transit time, the oral transit time, chewing, and then to the back and swallow. Well, and also too, it's hard, and just a clinical assessment, it's hard to assess silent aspiration. They might be silently aspirating and you're not seeing that, and you can more effectively assess that with an instrumental assessment, which would be like the fees or the modified barium, so. And I'm not saying OT doesn't do those, but in traditionally, when you're in a nursing home or a hospital situation or a rehab, it usually is speech and language pathology that does those. Okay, but we need to know when, okay, to get speech involved. So watch for things like that because we have a responsibility, you know, to understanding that. Now, let's talk about what happens when we know and we've worked with speech, okay, together there's a treatment plan in place. Now, there's some concepts, right? right? So there's direct and indirect, there's, there's you know, 
compensatory, tell us about it. Yeah, so I like to think of it in two different categories. Um, we're either thinking of direct or indirect, and we're either thinking of rehabilitative or compensatory. Um, so which one we want to talk about first? Let's do direct, right okay. off the bat. So direct intervention is when someone is actually eating food. Um, so, you know, maybe they're eating this pile of donuts here that we were just looking at. Maybe, you know, we probably wouldn't use that in our actual intervention, but it would be maybe you're working with a patient who had a stroke and you're trialing different, you know, modifications uh, to the alterations of their food texture. Um, that would be an example of a direct intervention if you're actually having them ingest and swallow the different consistencies of food in order to trial to make sure it's going to be appropriate for them. Or maybe you've worked on range of motion exercises with the patient and strengthening exercises and you feel that they're ready to trial going up to a higher level on the dysphagia diet. At that point, you know, maybe you're having them directly trial those foods and make sure it's safe for them to swallow. And that would be another example of a direct intervention. So anytime you're actually having them ingest the food, swallow the food, that's gonna be direct. Um, indirect is gonna be, doesn't actually involve any ingestion or swallowing of food. So that would be, maybe you're using something like the vital stem, which helps, is a form of electrical stimulation which helps to strengthen the facial musculature. Maybe you're doing oral motor exercises and range of motion exercises for the oral musculature. It's a preparatory method for swallowing. But if it doesn't involve, you know, actually eating food like those interventions didn't, it's gonna be indirect versus direct. It's gonna be actually involving the eating and swallowing food. So we could go on all day here. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll stop here and I'll remind you that, uh, first of all, hit the subscriber button below and that way, you know, you could join us for these series. Uh, but more importantly, uh, OT Help Desk uh, has almost six hours worth of feeding, eating and swallowing because it's important. Okay, now the way we do our um, lessons is that you get a pretest but you answer the question, it's a lower level question, and then I answer it, or Joseph, whoever's doing it. And then what we do is, is we go to a series of foundational concepts, and these are concepts like we were just talking about. Sure. Because we want to help you connect them, right? That's yeah. what we do. Yeah, and you'll get to hear us talk a little bit more there. I know we mentioned a second ago about the rehabilitative and compensation strategies. We didn't really talk about that here, um, but we go into that pretty in depth at the, at the yeah. help desk. And then, and then from there, okay, it builds. It builds into a series of questions that are higher level and then to a case simulation. In every one of our lessons, we do a case simulation. Um, and then finally, the grand finale is our post-test that's in that lesson. So you want to come learn about it because uh, we've become known, okay, in helping students, okay, uh, to be successful. And uh, we're here and you'll be seeing more of us, okay, as we begin to uh, get into this world of YouTube videos. So thank you again for coming and uh, look forward to seeing you in future videos. Take care now.